Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. So of 2.5 years had one night stand, trying to work through it, but I really need advice. Please give me your best advice. Please assist me as I need kind guidance. Here's the tale, followed by my questions. My boyfriend and I met seven months before COVID began. We were intending to go long distance, touring the globe in various places for six months, but COVID forced us to return home and live in with each other, which was much too soon in retrospect. We never used to argue since we got along so well, had so much fun, and had the same ideals. We looked to be quite well set up for a lovely, comfortable life together, and discussing our future together was never a problem. After a year of COVID, he began working full-time and stopped putting in effort. Stupid me didn't notice or didn't comprehend why I needed to inquire. My so is quite emotionally intelligent, yet he didn't realize what was wrong with me. He went out 2.5 months ago, when the clubs reopened after a lengthy absence. That night, I was irritated with him and told him I didn't want him to get too messed up. He said he'd be home by 4 a.m. He didn't, so I was concerned and attempted to call. Around 8 p.m., he phones back and says he'll coming home, but he's still at his friend's place. He returned home one hour later, but frightened, I contacted his pal, who reported my lover had departed hours before. I addressed him in the morning. He said he met a female and went to her place, but they merely kissed and did not undress. He claims he was squandered. He had lied to me while on the phone with me at her residence. I questioned him many times, and each time he denied anything else had occurred. We had that day, and I asked him if he had any possibility of having an STD, and he responded no, because I have a history of abuse. This is a delicate issue for me. I went a few days later on a four-day trip, and when I returned, he admitted he had lied. He had intercourse with the girl without using a condom. He said he had no idea who she was. The following day, he said that he had discovered her identity and had spoken to her on the phone while I was gone. He had uttered so many falsehoods and had abused our trust, as well as my and our relationship. He says there isn't anything else to it, that he lied because he feared losing me, that he still wants to spend time with me. He eventually understood that the reason for it was that he was, and still is, bored with our relationship. He seems to struggle with commitment. He wanted to be liberated. He wasn't thinking at all. He has never worked on a relationship and has false notions of what a partnership should be. I, on the other hand, am bad at establishing limits, which I am now working to improve. He has a much weaker libido than I do, and this has been a source of contention throughout our relationship. But my mind wanders to the possibility that it's just me that he doesn't want. But now we're trying to figure things out, he's been putting in. A lot of effort and, I believe, doing his best. I'm fatigued from working on it and being mostly responsible for our mutual development. If we can solve it and he can change, I want to be with him. I also don't have time to be changing houses, etc. I'm still here because we had a very nice relationship before all of this happened. Because we can't do anything exciting anymore. I believe Corona has contributed to our Anui. But how can someone be so brutally cruel to someone they claim to love? So, to answer my own question, how can I regain my faith in him? Should I do it? How can I avoid developing trust issues? Should I sleep with someone else with my BF's knowledge in order to avoid seeing him with someone else? Can things improve, and should I stay? Will he cheat once more? To the best of my knowledge, this is the first time he's done it, and he's embarrassed. Can he still be a nice man after doing this to me and plainly not caring how it made me feel? What is your general opinion on my situation? Thank you for your responses, and thank you for being kind with me. I'm somewhat vulnerable RN. Now, look at some replies. Calm. The best advice I think I can give you when you first find out is, don't trust them. You just don't know. Personally, his story sounds like minimizing everything and just giving you a little bit to get you to leave it alone. As far as the rest of your questions, nope, not without a lot of consistent effort on his part. He has to earn it. It's not an issue if you have reason not to trust someone. It's just logic and wisdom. No, if it comes down to this, why not just find someone else? Better than, right now? Yes, this will always be a part of your relationship now. Besides, you don't even know what it is that is getting better yet. Maybe, maybe not. Cheating happens because people have poor character. That can change, but it takes hard work. When I read questions like this, I think the it's more about the question. A better question I would ask is should you be pursuing someone when you've had to ask, 
can he still be a good guy, isn't asking the question enough to disqualify them. Dating is a test, that's the point. Seems like he failed. Better a failure now than with a mortgage and two kids, right? Not everyone has the potential to be forever. This is your future you are talking about. Op says, thanks a lot for your advice. I really don't trust him, but I want to be curious. It's driving me crazy being paranoid all the time. But maybe I can trust him and still stay vigilant. He's been very transparent and putting in effort, but not enough TBH. Question 6 about him being a good guy. I ask because being a good guy was always his best quality. What I loved about him, nice and helpful and thoughtful. But his actions now are the complete opposite of everything he's been and everything I thought he was. So I'm questioning if he is a good person who did something bad or a SHTTY person who was just good at hiding. Thanks to the good advice. Number 7 really puts things into perspective. Next com, I suggest you don't marry a good guy, but a good man. Are you talking about his persona here or his actions? Finally, I believe as far as cheating goes. True contrition and hard work are only a requirement to try to stay together. Make your choice on what you think the quality of your life going forward would be. Op says, that's some really solid advice. I will try my frigging darndest to marry a good man. It's bold. He always helps my family out when we go over. He's been respectful and kind and attentive. But as I'm writing this I realize he hasn't been those things in a while. Or he kind of complains about having to help out. He's not as kind and attentive as he used to be. Even though he really is trying to be and trying to take me into consideration, if that makes sense. Like he's trying to get out of his old bad habits. But time will tell if it's enough or if he really can change. Maybe a deadline would be good to have for how long I will stay and try. Not sure how long is appropriate though. The last piece of advice is great as well. It's difficult to see the whole picture being in the situation, but it helps to focus on it. Next calm, he is so completely full of SHT. He met up with someone he knew at a club, and they were going to have unprotected. He lied and lied, and he still is. He didn't tell you because he didn't want to have to deal with the fallout it would cause him. You absolutely shouldn't trust him again, and sleeping with someone else won't do anything to fix that. I would suggest that if you rug sweep this, he lose respect for you and end up doing it again but he already has no respect for you. And the relationship, get yourself an STD test and move on with your life. If you stay, be prepared for the next time you catch him. He'll know to hide it better. Op says, thanks for your advice. I'm getting tested ASAP. It's true he didn't respect me. Care, I don't think he would have told me if I hadn't found out. What you're saying it's hard. I want to believe him when he says he wouldn't do anything like that again because of the hopes and dreams we had together but I might just be in denial. SHTTY to be going through this. Next com, he's the one who has to do the heavy lifting of earning your trust and respect. You're the one who actually has to do the hardest part if you want to stay and that's to forgive and forget if you want to have a successful reconciliation. Op says, yeah, I can't even imagine forgiving, better yet forgetting, anytime soon. Maybe it will change with time, but I don't even feel like I want to forgive him at all right now. Dot B, I mostly just want to forgive myself for being a fool, for believing him, for letting him walk all over me, for not setting boundaries, for not noticing before it came to this, and to not blame myself for failing and keeping someone else faithful. I know I shouldn't, but I do. I think trust is essential, though, and I have to trust him because of what not trusting will do to me. Maybe forgiveness is also necessary. It's going to be really hard, though. You're right. He totally has to be the one to do the heavy lifting for trust and respect. I'm going to tell him that tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks for reading.